most of us are familiar with the standard narrative of how the universe began. It started with an infinitely dense point of infinite temperature, with no size, called a singularity. This singularity exploded, creating all the space, energy, and matter that we consider to be our universe in an event known as the Big Bang. Between 10 to the power of negative 36 and 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds, space expanded exponentially, growing much larger. After this period, space continued to expand but at a much slower rate, eventually leading to the universe we observe today. This is the inflationary Big Bang theory, the most popular and broadly accepted explanation of the universe's origin. However, a few physicists challenged this theory, suggesting that the universe existed before the Big Bang, stretching infinitely into the past and future. They proposed that while the universe is expanding today, it was contracting before the Big Bang. In this view, the Big Bang wasn't a bang but a bounce, a moment when a shrinking universe reversed course and began to grow. This theory suggests the universe could bounce again, with today's expansion followed by a collapse in the distant future, potentially leading to another bounce. Some even suggest this cycle of bouncing could be infinite. This idea challenges the way most cosmologists view the universe, where everything is believed to have started with the Big Bang. Renowned physicist Brian Cox also questions the Big Bang theory, asserting that something cannot emerge from nothing. Adding to the debate, the James Webb Telescope has made discoveries that contradict the idea that the Big Bang marked the universe's beginning. These findings raise the question, if the Big Bang wasn't the beginning, then what was? Could the universe have started with a bounce or something else entirely? The idea that the universe had a beginning, or what was once called a day without a yesterday, dates back to Georges Lemaitre in 1927. While it is still defensible to state that the universe likely had a beginning, that stage of cosmic history has little to do with the hot Big Bang that describes the early universe. Many laypeople, and even a minority of professionals, still cling to the idea that the Big Bang means the beginning of it all but that definition is now considered outdated. The Big Bang is no longer seen as the birth of time and space. Instead, evidence in 2023 points to a non-singular origin of our universe. We never achieved those arbitrarily high temperatures, and our universe is best described by an inflationary period that occurred before the Big Bang. The Big Bang is now understood as the aftermath of what occurred at the end of inflation. During inflation, the universe was empty, no particles, matter, or photons, just empty space with a vast amount of energy fluctuating over time. As the universe inflated, these fluctuations stretched to larger scales while new small-scale fluctuations were created. This superposition of fluctuations is a defining feature of cosmic inflation. Inflation ends randomly, and not in all locations at once. If you lived in an inflating universe, you would experience nearby regions where inflation ended while the space between you and it expanded exponentially. For a brief moment, you might detect the start of a big bang before that region disappeared from view. In a small region, perhaps no bigger than a hamster ball, the energy inherent to space gets converted into matter and radiation. This conversion happens rapidly, taking about 10 to the power of negative 33 seconds, but it is not instantaneous. As space's energy converts into particles, the temperature rises rapidly from near absolute zero to about 10 to the power of 20 Kelvin. Under these conditions, all particles behave as radiation due to their high kinetic energy. This process, known as reheating, marks the end of inflation and the beginning of the hot Big Bang. As the hot Big Bang starts, distant regions recede more slowly over time. The expansion rate drops in regions where inflation ends, while surrounding inflating regions continue to expand exponentially. In the standard inflationary picture, there is almost no chance that any two separate hot big bangs will collide or interact. Eventually, inflation ends everywhere, and the energy inherent in space converts into a hot, dense sea of particles. The only imperfections correspond to quantum fluctuations stretched across the universe during inflation. Positive energy fluctuations create overdense regions, while negative ones lead to underdense regions, serving as the seeds for cosmic structure. We cannot observe these density fluctuations directly from the early universe, but we can extrapolate them from the cosmic microwave background, which emerged 380,000 years later. The temperature fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background confirm the story of cosmic inflation. 
However, inconsistencies between the cosmic microwave background and our current cosmological model suggest we are missing something fundamental. Loop quantum cosmology, derived from loop quantum gravity, where gravity consists of particles forming the fabric of spacetime, proposes an alternative. In this model, space has a minimum size, the Planck scale, 10 to the power of negative 35 meters, meaning the Big Bang couldn't have existed. Instead of an infinitely small, dense point, the universe experienced a bounce due to quantum geometry's repulsive force. This implies a universe that contracts and then bounces, expanding and collapsing cyclically. Loop quantum cosmology explains cosmic microwave background anomalies, including hemispherical anisotropy and large-scale power suppression, by incorporating quantum gravity corrections. Confirming loop quantum cosmology is challenging due to cosmic variance, but it presents an intriguing alternative to the traditional Big Bang narrative. It provides intriguing resolutions to some cosmological puzzles, and moreover, it questions whether the universe had a beginning or is cyclic, challenging the traditional Big Bang view. Cyclic cosmologies suggest an immortal universe with endless bounces. However, entropy presents a challenge, as each bounce increases disorder and decreases usable energy. New cyclic models address this by requiring significant expansion to dissipate entropy. Nonetheless, calculations suggest that even with these corrections, the universe likely had a beginning, implying a Big Bang at some point. The debate continues, with proponents of a cyclic universe yet to respond to recent challenges. Most of us are familiar with the classic narrative of the universe's inception, an infinitely dense, infinitely hot point known as a singularity exploded, giving rise to all the space, energy, and matter that constitutes our universe in an event called the Big Bang. This explosion was followed by a rapid exponential expansion between 10 to the power of negative 36 and 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds, after which the expansion slowed, eventually leading to the universe as we observe it today. This inflationary Big Bang theory is the most widely accepted explanation for the universe's origin. However, some physicists challenge this view, proposing that the universe existed before the Big Bang, extending infinitely into the past and future. According to their bouncing universe theory, the Big Bang was not an origin but a rebound a moment when a contracting universe reversed into expansion. This theory suggests that the universe might undergo endless cycles of expansion and contraction, challenging the traditional Big Bang view. Renowned physicist Brian Cox has also questioned the Big Bang theory, arguing against the idea of something emerging from nothing. Adding to the debate, discoveries by the James Webb Telescope suggest that the Big Bang might not mark the universe's beginning. If the Big Bang wasn't the start, then what preceded it? Could the universe have begun with a bounce or another unknown process? Join us as we explore one of physics' most perplexing questions. The concept that the universe had a beginning, often described as a day without a yesterday, was first proposed by Georges Lemaitre in 1927. While it's still plausible to say the universe likely had a beginning, this early stage has little to do with the hot Big Bang that describes our early universe. Many laypeople and some professionals still equate the Big Bang with the universe's birth, but this definition is outdated. Today, evidence points to a non-singular origin of our universe. We never reached the arbitrarily high temperatures once thought to define the beginning of the universe. Instead, our universe is better described by an inflationary period before the Big Bang, with the Big Bang being the aftermath of inflation's end. During inflation, the universe was empty, no particles, matter, or photons, just empty space with immense energy fluctuating over time by about one part in 30,000. As the universe inflated, these fluctuations stretched to larger scales, with new small-scale fluctuations created atop them. This superposition of fluctuations is a hallmark of cosmic inflation, persisting as long as inflation continues. However, inflation ends randomly and not uniformly. In an inflating universe, nearby regions where inflation ends would be detectable before they disappear from view due to exponential expansion. In a tiny region, perhaps no larger than a hamster ball, inflation gives rise to matter and energy, setting the stage for the Big Bang. It provides intriguing resolutions to some cosmological puzzles, and moreover, it questions whether the universe had a beginning or is cyclic, challenging the traditional Big Bang view. Cyclic cosmologies suggest an immortal universe with endless bounces. However, entropy presents a challenge, as each bounce increases disorder and decreases usable energy. 
New cyclic models address this by requiring significant expansion to dissipate entropy. Nonetheless, calculations suggest that even with these corrections, the universe likely had a beginning, implying a Big Bang at some point. The debate continues, with proponents of a cyclic universe yet to respond to recent challenges. Most of us are familiar with the classic narrative of the universe's inception, an infinitely dense, infinitely hot point known as a singularity exploded, giving rise to all the space, energy, and matter that constitutes our universe in an event called the Big Bang. This explosion was followed by a rapid exponential expansion between 10 to the power of negative 36 and 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds, after which the expansion slowed, eventually leading to the universe as we observe it today. This inflationary Big Bang theory is the most widely accepted explanation for the universe's origin. However, some physicists challenge this view, proposing that the universe existed before the Big Bang, extending infinitely into the past and future. According to their bouncing universe theory, the Big Bang was not an origin but a rebound, a moment when a contracting universe reversed into expansion. This theory suggests that the universe might undergo endless cycles of expansion and contraction, challenging the traditional Big Bang view. Renowned physicist Brian Cox has also questioned the Big Bang theory, arguing against the idea of something emerging from nothing. Adding to the debate, discoveries by the James Webb Telescope suggest that the Big Bang might not mark the universe's beginning. If the Big Bang wasn't the start, then what preceded it? Could the universe have begun with a bounce or another unknown process? Join us as we explore one of physics' most perplexing questions. The concept that the universe had a beginning, often described as a day without a yesterday, was first proposed by Georges Lemaitre in 1927. While it's still plausible to say the universe likely had a beginning, this early stage has little to do with the hot Big Bang that describes our early universe. Many laypeople and some professionals still equate the Big Bang with the universe's birth, but this definition is outdated. Today, evidence points to a non-singular origin of our universe. We never reached the arbitrarily high temperatures once thought to define the beginning of the universe. Instead, our universe is better described by an inflationary period before the Big Bang, with the Big Bang being the aftermath of inflation's end. During inflation, the universe was empty, no particles, matter, or photons, just empty space with immense energy fluctuating over time by about one part in 30,000. As the universe inflated, these fluctuations stretched to larger scales, with new small-scale fluctuations created atop them. This superposition of fluctuations is a hallmark of cosmic inflation, persisting as long as inflation continues. However, inflation ends randomly and not uniformly. In an inflating universe, nearby regions where inflation ends would be detectable before they disappear from view due to exponential expansion. In a tiny region, perhaps no larger than a hamster ball, inflation gives rise to matter and energy, setting the stage for the Big Bang.